Cool. Thank you, Christina, and welcome back to the MS Build Live stage. I am Damien Brady. I'm joined today by Matteo Kalina. Matteo, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Damien. Awesome. So, Matteo, you are one of the um, maintainers of Fastify JS, correct? Yes. Uh, but you're also uh, one of the co-organizers of NodeConf EU, is that right? Yes. Yeah, so this is a node-based conference based in... in Europe, Ireland. In Ireland? Yes, okay. it's organized by the company I work for, mm -hmm. uh, Nearform. Nearform. We are a Node.js professional services company. Mm -hmm. We help companies build, uh, build, deploy, manage, whatever, JavaScript application, both cool. on the front end and on the back end. Right, so the, the point is that you, are, you, you know Node, right? You are yeah, I'm part <laughs> of the Node.js technical steering committee as well. So, oh, okay. okay. So, yeah, yeah All right. I know Node pretty. <laughs> yep, awesome. So, uh, you are one of the maintainers of a tool called Fastify or a framework called Fastify.js, yes. right? Um, for those of us who don't know, I'm not, I'm not huge in the, in the um, JavaScript community. I do a little bit, but I don't do a lot. What is Fastify? Okay, so... Um, uh, at some point, some years ago, I uh, was uh, uh, getting a little bit uh, frustrated uh, on the status of the frameworks uh, in Node.js and of the web frameworks in Node.js. I didn't see much uh, innovation happening in that space anymore. Uh, that space, if you're no Node, you probably have used Express, and Express is do dominates the ecosystem. But I, I didn't see much innovation happening anymore in that regard. In fact, Express has been stable for, for such a long time. And so I started to, uh, I started to think about what were the, the major things that wanted to, to do differently and want to innovate. And we want, I wanted to, to see uh, a better use of the new language primitives that were introduced in the JavaScript languages, language, um, in, from uh, async await, promises, uh, TypeScript support, great TypeScript support, and all those things that developers use these days. Uh, on top of that, I really want to write a better uh, uh, performance uh, out of the tool. Uh, I wanted to create a framework that was a zero-cost uh, abstraction. And in order to do this, uh, I had another goal. Um, and I wanted to create, uh, building, uh, I don't know if you try, ever tried to build a framework an HTTP framework, don't do this, okay? I've done it, <laughs> don't do it. Like, it's an impressive journey. It's super hard. There's a lot of things to consider. It took almost, the framework is three years old, and it took us more or less two years before becoming like production grade. And the reason why we were able to do this was because we focused on community first. Okay. So we started building the, a maintainer's community uh, from day zero. So I started working on this thing together with a friend of mine called Thomas de la Vedova. And uh, basically, when we had zero lines of code. So essentially, I, I started, I really wanted to do it. But uh, the, my first goal was, can I convince somebody else to do it with me? Okay. And uh, that's how the, 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 that's, now, right now, I think we have 11 active contributors on the framework. I was going to ask, so it is an open source framework. It's an, op it's an open source framework with an open community. It's very easy to contribute to the framework. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, we are very friendly in reviewing your code. We are also very strict, so you have a lot of iteration on the pull requests, but these enable us to keep the same level and the same high quality level that we have in all the, in all the frameworks. So. Course, and that was kind of a key guiding principle, right? Was to be able to enable the community to contribute yes. in a meaningful way yeah. without impacting the performance and the quality of what, what exactly. was Exactly. And this is why uh, the uh, CI infrastructure and the CI pipeline was uh, super important. Also, uh, Fastify is a great uh, user experience and developer experience out of the box. So uh, all of that together means that I, I wanted to have a great user experience, but also a great way of uh, developing the frameworks itself. So, of course. Yeah. So let's talk about that a little bit, the, the build and CI process and so on. Because if you have these two potentially competing aims, you have the ability for anybody to contribute, but you still want to maintain that quality. You don't want contributors to submit code that is going to break something unexpected. This is where a good CI pipeline comes in. So the, one of the hardest, uh, hardest things for us has been to provide an environment where uh, developers using whatever machines that uh, I am a very Unix, very Unix person. So I code on VI, I use Tmux, and I don't care, essentially. Yeah, and right. this is whatever. Like, 
I'm oblivious to a lot of other things that are happening in the, in the developer community, to say in that regard. I've been using those tools forever. But a lot of other people are not, like, are not friendly tools. The tools that I use are not friendly tools. No. Uh, <laughs> not I would not be using Vim. Or Vim I, yeah, I know, but you, know, um, you should. <laughs> I but, tried but, once, but I couldn't, I couldn't close you probably it. So still, you, machine, you probably yeah. haven't exited yet. If yeah, you tried no, the once. machine's open in my desk at home. <laughs> I can't get rid of it. Yeah. Um, so essentially, it's, uh, um, one of the things was providing a really good developer uh, uh, a really good way for developer, developer using a Mac, Linux, and Windows to contribute to the framework itself. Yep. Um, the reason is uh, we had some problems in the past that things were not really working on Windows. Uh, and that was a very big problem and very frustrating for our users as well. So in order to address those, we had to, add, uh, to test everything also on Windows. Uh, on top of that, we also wanted to test everything on Yarn. Because uh, I don't know if you know about the, the uh, Node ecosystem, there is NPM, which is the default package, uh, package manager, but you can also use a thing called Yarn, which is also very popular, very popular in the React community, mm -hmm. especially. So that Yarn, and, but is slightly different. So we wanted to make sure that our, every, our setup will also work complete, 100% working with Yarn. So, uh, so that well. means that every single time somebody submits code, you need to make sure it works on Windows and Linux and Mac, yes. and Yarn, and NPM. On four different versions of Node, that have on all of those. On four different versions of Node as well. Okay. <laughs> so it's a lot of CI runs. Yes. Yeah. A lot yeah. of CI runs. So that was obviously something that, that you started doing quite early in the project? I'm yes. Guessing? At the beginning, we were testing only with Travis. That was not enough on, on, on Linux. That was definitely not enough. Then we started testing on... Um, uh, then we needed to test, uh, we wanted to test Windows, we tried AppVayor. Okay. Now, doing a build on AppVayor on four different versions of Node was taking us maybe half an hour to an hour, which was okay. a huge turnaround time, especially when we wanted to cut releases. So we really wanted to have sure, make sure that all the tests were passing before our release was cut. And so it means there was always this back and forth process of waiting up there to finish. Um, and uh, uh, so also on top of that, there was some other stuff. But yeah. Yeah. So it was Travis and Avaya were the two yeah. things that you, you tried. But and spoiler alert, um, you tried Azure pipelines. Yeah. So the, there was a couple of things that went to Azure pipelines. So the first thing that came to us was uh, as a because of how much how slow up and uh, how flaky up Vayor was for us. Okay. So all of this in the open source version, by the way, we are not paying a dime to anybody. So thank up Vayor, thank Travis, thank Azure Pipelines. We are all on freeware, sorry. Uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, AppVayor was, uh, was too slow. And we tried uh, Azure Pipelines at the beginning to change from AppVayor to Azure Pipelines mm -hmm. to speed up our Windows build. And we also added the Yarn build on on, on Fastify, on, on, on pipelines as well, um, because of, you know, uh, it's super fast. Yeah. And so this is some of the advantages of, of open source tooling like this, right? You can, you can have your CI builds in Travis and in AppVayor and in Azure Pipelines, for example. Um, you can use all of those things yeah, to see great, what yeah. works for you. Yeah. And uh, by the way, those are great tools, and I'm a fan of Travis. It works really well. Mm. It was not, it's, um, and AppVayor as well, I used in a lot of projects. It's just that with this, we needed, we have a lot of tests, huge amount of that. We'll see that in a moment. But yeah, I know, we'll have a look uh, in a sec. Uh, we have a lot of things to check. Uh, web framework is a very, very complex beast. Let me just say this. Don't try making one at home. And uh, it's, uh, so basically, we had to do a lot of work and make sure that this is uh, that everything was running smoothly. Mm -hmm. That's it. So, so, okay. So you made the decision to give uh, Azure Pipelines a go. Um, I think you mentioned to me before. It, part of it is because we do have hosted build agents for uh, Windows, Linux, and Mac. Correct. So you could test across these operating systems relatively. Yes, that was one of the key parts. We wanted to uh, reach the point where we had a tool where we don't have to rely on two or three. We want to reach a point where we don't have to rely on two or three or four, whatever, different providers for, mm -hmm. uh, to simplify maintenance, more or less. Um, also, when you're choosing a CI system, you want something that is very stable. 
So you don't want botched builds, you don't want uh, flaky tests. Now, yeah. uh, it, flaky tests are a really bad thing, okay? Because yep. they can, you want an environment where if a test fails, it means that there is a bug. Yes, yeah, the and test should pass every time, otherwise it doesn't. Yes, and with some of those, both with, uh, recently with Travis and before that with Azure Pipelines, we ended up, uh, and before that, we, before that with Abveyor, we, have, we had some uh, flakiness that was introduced by the platform itself. Yep, so you want to get rid of that. I'm going to jump in. I want to show people what this pipeline looks like. Yep. Um, so if we can jump to that screen um, that I've got here, we should be able to see fastify.io, and I'm going to zoom in a little Yay, bit. Yay, hi. Yep. That's a nice logo, right? With you have a nice, so you need to, if you build a web framework, whatever, you need to have a nice logo, OK? Nice logo. And logo so, logo you first, know, then you are. That's URL the first thing then. that you need, a nice logo. <laughs> we had a very bad logo before that, so okay. just saying. Um, and then, of course, it's on GitHub, right? It's, it's yeah. an open source uh, project. If you go back to the site for one second, just to show you what this look like, if you can scroll down a bit, you can see it's used by some companies around. You can see this very similar to, to Express. Go stay there, stay there, go up. Yeah, stay there at the top. You can define your routes using a sync await and all the cool stuff that you can want to expect. Cool. It also supports TypeScript, by the way. Awesome. So um, the, the code itself is in GitHub. The first thing I noticed when I came here as well, as well as the amazing logo, great job on the logo. Um, we've got all these um, build badges, yep. which is really common. And one of them is the Azure Pipelines one. Yep. Um, and so the project itself is public. But as well as that, the Azure Pipeline is publicly listed as well. Yes. So I'm not logged in at all. I have no special access to your Azure Pipelines instance, but I can see the build result. Yes, oh, and you can also see our configs, which took a significant amount of time to do. So to <laughs> go and copy it. Yes. So we can see it's running uh, Yarn, different versions of Node, Windows, uh, different versions there. We can see the whole logs from everything that's happening as well. I think I chose the worst task. Yeah, but you should look at the run the test ones. That's run the only test? one with some meaningful things. Uh, no, run tests. Run tests, OK. This is a, this is a lot of output. So, so a lot of this stuff is you've made this available to the public. There's a lot of output here. Um, on the tests, because I want to I make sure we get to all the things that are really exciting about this. Um, we get our summary of exactly what's happened. We can see the process of, of these builds as they've yep. gone through. We get code coverage support. I'll look at that in a second. You can see the code coverage across your tests. Yep. We even get our tests that have succeeded. And now this is Node, right? Um, it's still, you're publishing these test results up to Azure Pipelines. And we're seeing you know, your, your failing tests over time, how they're performing now. So you get. This nice graph, even though you know it's it's Node, it's not .NET, it's not Microsoft stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, the other one was the code coverage. That is a lot of tests, by the way. That's impressive. <laughs> Nicely done. Um, and 99.99% .99 pass percentage is pretty good too. Um, but code coverage as well was one of the cool things. So we can actually see the code coverage. And this is a Kubertura. Is that the, the mm? name? Kubertura. Is Kuber that no. Format? So it is the thing. Now, it is the fun stuff about this, the, the, the integration, the glue. Mm -hmm. So essentially, you, in order to get, uh, to get the, our code coverage output digestible for Azure Pipelines, yep. we convert our results to this format. It's called Cobertura, okay. which is a format invented in the Java era, like, I don't know, maybe 15 years ago or something, which is a format for, for this type of data mm -hmm. that Azure Pipeline can digest. Okay. So what we do is we generate that file. We convert, and then that file, we upload that file to Azure Pipelines. So that's the, the flow. Right. And we do a similar things for our tests to get the test data in, in there. So uh, in order to get the test data, we need to convert it to some JUnit format, which is a little bit obscure. So check out our configuration, because it's, uh, yeah. the, it, 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 there is some time to save, by the way. Yes. So you have, um, you have this across a couple of things. Uh, I just want to show you this summary. Um, we've only got about a minute left, so I just want to jump into this stuff really quickly. Um, this is a deep link into the commit that was changed, yeah. but I think you were showing me before the way that the templates are set up. You have a separate template for NPM and Yarn, and then you have a reference to that template from Azure Pipeline. Yes. And you're using cool things like matrix strategies so that you're actually building these things in parallel, running these yes. builds in parallel in these different environments. Yes. So I, I would highly suggest if you're going to if you're going to look at doing this kind of stuff, definitely have a look at the way that 
that you guys have done it. Yes, for oh, definitely. Like once I've done this, I've copied and pasted this stuff into maybe I don't know, 20 different projects already. Yep. Like copy and paste this stuff. Just go ahead and steal it. It's fine. Yeah, definitely. So. Uh, GitHub.com Fastify or Fastify.io is the project. Yeah, Fastify.io, right? yeah. Okay. That's and the website. You can find all the links. Yeah, and you can follow the links there and use that framework. Um, any final messages just before we, uh, we, we carry over from the end of this show? Uh, I want, so uh, when we started working on, uh, when we started evaluating Azure, Azure pipelines as, as a tool, we had some, uh, we encountered some bugs on Azure pipelines itself. And uh, um, I've been amazed by the level of, even if you were open source, like for free type of things, of the high quality level of support that the Azure Pipelines team has given us. I would want to thank uh, Martin Wood. Martin Woodward? Woodward, yeah. I can't pronounce this, I'm sorry. <laughs> Martin Woodward for uh, providing to fix that bug for us in, uh, in a matter of a couple of days because we were basically blocked. Uh, and we were just super frustrated because we really wanted to use this. It was solving all our problems, minus this thing that was actually preventing us to, to use it, so well, to, roll it out, to rolling it out. That's so good that you got that support from the team, and it's fantastic to see how much um, success you're having with this as well. Yeah, it, it, it's fantastic. Um, it, it has been fantastic for us. We are also migrating other... So Fastify is built, uh, it, it's built as a plugin-based system, mm -hmm. so we are also migrating some of the plugins to Azure Pipelines as well. Oh. Uh, again, for having uh, better testing, better Windows testing. I wanted to say one quick thing that... We've got to make it quick because we've got to jump off. But yes, yes. Uh, they're thinking us out. The total build time, we cut down our total build time from uh, 20, 30 minutes one hour of, to one hour to like yep. 10 minutes with this. Awesome. So it's the level of quality of the builds and the speed of them. It's... Phenomenal. So awesome. thank you. Um, I'm going to wrap. Yeah, so thank you so much for joining us and showing us this. Um, I'm actually going to send you off for a quick break, and we will be back with Anders Halsberg discussing, discussing inside TypeScript. Send him your questions, the hashtag MSBuild, and the link below. Yes.